Hello, welcome back to the Good, Bad and Stupid News. It's Monday the 19th of August. Hope you've had a good weekend. Um, I had a good weekend. I'm still feeling the back end of a hangover that I had all day yesterday. So um, this video is going to be a test of how well my brain is working um, because it's been functioning on very, very low battery um, for the last 24 hours. So, But it's self-inflicted, so the show must go on. Even for, the, I mean, nobody's watching them anyway, so it's not going to um, unimpress too many people. So uh, we, we, we shall battle on. Um, as I've said before, it's also on podcast, which is on, well, at the moment, the good, the bad, and stupid dot podbean.com, but you can also, I think, find it on iTunes and other places. So uh, if you don't want to listen to me because you've got a hangover, or don't want to watch me because you've got a hangover, and don't want to see my uh, stupid hangover face, you can listen to it on the podcast. Um, so you're going to get straight on with it and uh, start with, uh, well, to get this one out of the way anyway, Jihadi Jack was the, one of the main news today, wasn't it, that they Britain has told Jihadi Jack. Is, who gave him that name? Did we give him that? Did the papers give him that name or did he choose that name himself? Has he called himself Jihadi Jack? He's got like an Instagram page or Twitter page under the username Jihadi Jack. He's basically the the, the white uh, kind of um, UK citizen. Well, what UK citizen that uh, went British and Canadian citizenship, but he went to join ISIS or Daesh or whatever you want to call them. Um, uh, and he basically wants to come back to the UK to be tried and to be uh, um, dealt with here but the UK have told him that he's, they've took his citizenship off him and uh, pretty much said it's Canadian's problem which can, Canada's problem beg your pardon which uh, was it say a white all insider said it's Canada's problem now which is a bit a bit tight really isn't it I mean obviously nobody wants him or you wouldn't want him but he's basically got to go to uh go through the, the system or the law or somewhere or other, but he left here, I mean, it was from here, so you would think he would have to do it here. He can't just, probably he's probably got nothing to do with Canada, apart from his citizenship, obviously, but has he ever been there? But just, just to say, sorry, we're not having him, you can have him. He's a little bit fucking, a bit naughty, but many people won't give a shit anyway, so. You know, he's like fucking made his own bed, I suppose, isn't he? So, uh, who knows what he's been up to over there? But if he uh, wants to go to prison over here, or it's not about what he wants, is it? But if he, he has to go to prison somewhere or other, he shouldn't just be like sort of palming him off onto uh, onto Canada. I don't think. I mean, I think this is my opinion that he should uh, uh, be tried or dealt with here, and like, obviously dealt with harshly or whatever, but. I don't think you can just like chuck him off into somebody else to deal with because that's not going to go down well with uh, future relations and stuff, is it? But anyway, what do I know about trying fucking uh, terrorists? Uh, I'm going to move on from that story because it's a little bit dark. Um, Britain to bake in a bank holiday heatwave. Uh, Brits will finally get to bask in the sunshine as a tropical heat surge rescues the summer in time for the bank holiday weekend. That's this bank holiday weekend, isn't it? They said that the temperatures are going to get up to 27 degrees, so that's fucking good. I was meant to be working all weekend, but my plans have just changed. 27 degrees all weekend, and I was going to be doing a lot of driving on the motorways and stuff, so the last place I want to be is 27 degrees on the motorway when everybody else is fucking jumping on the motorway bank holiday. Yeah, I think it was, uh, I'm glad to hear that, because this weekend it's been pissing down, windy, shit, so I should have bloody done it then, really, but never mind. I've decided to uh, make an executive decision and enjoy the sunshine. Um, so yeah, hopefully, three weeks worth of hot weather coming, so uh, get your, uh, get your, what's it called, your um, your bathing suits and whatever else ready. 
it's August last bank holiday, isn't it? So there's, everyone's going to be off into, uh, you know, off to, off on the holidays, off to the coast and whatever else. So uh, yeah, I might as well join them as I live by the coast. I might as well just fucking make the best of it. Um, yeah, so uh, uh, that's that's all good. Um, Seventy six. Mar There's a guy here called uh, Marco George has set a new record for doing a headstand on a motorbike. The thirty. There's a picture if you want to see it. What can you see that? Yeah, see him doing a bit. He did that. Seventy six miles an hour. They call this a uh, brave. Marco George has set a new record for doing a headstand on a motorbike. Some would say brave, others would say different, but um, the 30-year-old robotics engineer hit 76 miles per hour at the straight line as world's fastest wheelie competition at Elvington Airfield. Now, he's doing a headstand in a wheelie competition, so could say that's a disqualification, but it's a wheelie competition, so he's doing a headstand. That ain't a fucking wheelie, is it? But he's uh, won the record, world record for whatever he's done anyway. And uh, he's promised his mum that if he hits 70 miles an hour, he'd call it a day. So uh, I bet he don't. He's going to try and beat that, and he? 76 miles an hour. So uh, how, long, how long his practice has he just like, just banged it out on the day because it was meant to be a wheelie? And he's like, well, fuck it, I'll do an headstand instead. Mad at night, I mean, some people, are, the guys on the motorbikes are fucking crazy, aren't they? But I suppose he's been doing it all his life, so he's at one with the wheels. You know, if I jumped on it, I'd fucking lose my head or whatever, I think. You know I mean? I don't think I'd last too long if I was jumped on a motorbike now. But then people have been doing it all their lives. They're like fucking, you know. It's like these guys who... It's like, when you've got like a special skill or something, it's like, how do you find it? But if you've been doing it all your life, it comes natural, innit? But you know, there's people who do keepy ups on the with the football when they're sitting on the floor and it's like keeping up in keeping up in the ball for like hours and hours. And how the fuck do you ever find that you can do that apart from do that for hours and hours and hours and hours and hours and hours and hours? Imagine if you did it for hours and hours and hours and hours and hours and then still were shit at it. That's the worst thing. The ones who get good and then they do it and make money out of it, but the ones who like fucking because you've got to practice and practice and practice and practice, and you to get too good at something like that. So uh, yeah, I've still not found my talent yet. It's meant to be comedy, but mm, these aren't meant to be. This is news, but you know you have to see me in a different arena for the comedy side of things. Um, so yeah, so uh, he's still got his head anyway. So we'll move on to uh, other, other uh, exciting motorbike adventures. I'm sure. Um, someone who's lost something, who's lost his hair. Sean Ryder was talking earlier on the 56 year. Old, they're talking about. They always have to sort of highlight him for his drug use, don't they? 56 year old who took cocaine, heroin, and ecstasy in his younger days, says he does not have alcohol in the house. He doesn't like it around his kids and stuff like that because he's, uh, he can get away, as you say, men can get away with being kids until they're at least 40. I did. I did, and I still do as well. Um, I was still living the same lifestyle I had been when I was 16, but it wasn't a kid anymore. So uh, anyway, he changes, changes his ways and keeps that away from, uh, from the house and away from his kids. But... The thing I wanted to get to was that he said that he'd had a he'd recently lost all his hair due to an underactive thyroid. Uh, he had a hip operation. What's that got to do with it? And uh, all his eyebrows, eyelashes, fingernails all fell off, all fell out. Fuck you now. It was his doctor. I mean, his doctor was uh, was his doctor the right doctor or did he fucking get the stand in but uh, yeah so that's pretty mad isn't it your right hair eyes and eyelashes all fall out but he said I'm tough he don't look that bad really to be honest he looks fucking looks almost no different he had short hair anyway but I'm, he said I'm tough if I was Peter Andre or someone I wouldn't leave the house um, so uh, some don't go wishing a hyperactive thyroid on Peter Andre on the back of that statement people um well, even if he was, 
Peter Andre wouldn't be far from fucking his television cameras and stuff anyway, would he? I saw him once in Brighton and he came into, was it Costa Coffee or Starbucks or something like that? He came in to get a coffee and he had it like everywhere, he had about fucking 10 camera dudes all with him with the fucking, you know, like everyone following him, his whole thing, because that thing, what he does is like just follow me around my life doing shit mundane things, isn't it? So this was him doing a shit mundane thing like getting a coffee. But he had to, you know, he got all this fucking uh, film, film crew and everything and everyone's having to shoo out of the way and it's like, how can you act normal when you've got all that shit going on? Like, so you can pretend to be just doing, you know, pretending to be me. This is me being normal or, you know, but he's like acting up to the cameras, isn't he? Because he looks on the camera when you see it, you just see him, don't you? So you see him just going around, just doing, oh, I love that. But what's behind him is about 10 guys with like notepads and films and camera and all that. And, you know, double take, oh, go out, come back in, do it that way. So it's all bullshit. Uh, was that the life and times of Peter Andre? Um, yeah, there's certainly definitely better programmes to watch than that. What's this one? We're for money, politics, and online game. Fortnite are the topics most likely to cause family mealtime rows. A survey reveals. Um, I was trying to think what else. I actually brought that one because I thought I'd think of other things that cause mealtime rows, but I forgot to bloody make a note of anything. So, what causes mealtime rows? Where you're coming from? Is it? somebody telling that your food's shit? Is it somebody not turning up for dinner when you've made it? Is it uh, mealtime rows, mealtime rows, mealtime rows? Nope, that's it, we're gonna have to move on from that. I should have done my research. There you go, there's the first mistake that I should have done. But I the hangover. There you go, mealtime row, having a hangover at the dinner table. I remember once I fell asleep during my dinner um, when I had a really bad hangover. And I fell asleep and I woke up as my head hit the potatoes. That was at my fucking grandparents' house. So uh, you can imagine, uh, I, I think they asked me if I was on drugs or something or other. I think I was just sleep deprived, but anyway, that's another story. Um, Snogging Strictly Dancer Katya Jones lost her husband by unexpectedly landing. Oh no, the sp them two people who were uh, in the Kissgate scandal, the ginger guy and his uh, his wife, that his wife kissed Sean Walsh, was it? Yeah, that's all right. That's them two there, and that's him there, giving it the calendar one, the calendar pose. Um, yeah, they've split up. But that was on the fucking cards anyway. I should have saved himself ten months and did it on the on the on the spot. That's been brewing. I bet they've been fucking you know, when shit fucking shit happens and then they're just niggling at each other eventually, like it's the writing was on the wall, wasn't it? Um I'm no relationship expert, believe me. Um But that was like fucking highly publicised and that, you know, you ain't gonna fucking walk away from that, are they? Um, Nazi surprise at the seaside. German soldiers walk the streets as history buffs dress up for a World War II enactment. Are they history buffs or are they madmen that, or, you know, mad enthusiasts that love the German sort of. Uh, Uniforms now. I told you before if you've seen any other ones about the I went to the world the war and peace Festival and there's like there's a fine line between it Did I say enthusiastic? Well, these are history buffs Or people who love dressing up in the German army officers uniforms and stuff And the real gear the, the real gear is rather it's all collected in it and like they've got all the real Clothes outfits and like, I fucking can't wait to get it on. 
and uh, all the crazy stuff that's for sale there. We think like with the Nazi. One of them was like a T-shirt with Hitler's World Tour. You know, like the the bands when you have like a when Led Zeppelin tours or some shit like that, and he got all the dates on the back. And the T-shirt, this one was like Hitler's tour, and he had all the dates on the back of where Hitler went giving his speeches or maybe it was his, like, I can't remember what it was now, maybe it was his movements during the Second World War, but yeah, there's a fine line between enthusiasm and loving to dress up like a German uh, a German soldier for the day, or loving to get that gear on. I'm sure just, I'm sure some of them are genuine, but one or two are probably like, you know, like that Max, it was that uh, rich guy who had a sex party, but like everyone was dressed up as German soldiers. Something like that. Uh, what's this? Suggs, the Madness frontman. Uh, well, it's, a, it's an interview with the Madness frontman, but I wanted to uh, just highlight. I'm not going to go through it all, but they're just discussing uh, about him and lots of questions and stuff like that. But one of them was his, his first appearance on Top of the Pop Suggs from Madness. Your first appearance on Top of the Pops was a landmark. That was the question to him. So your first appearance on Top of the Pops was a landmark. And he said it was. I'm not saying whether or not amphetamines are involved. Which is basically saying amphetamines are involved in it. So uh, uh, I'll have to watch that one now and see how fucking... They must be jumping all over the place if he's, if he's making a point of saying that. They must have been uh, going crazy. But uh, I suppose, you know make the most of it and it just fucking get on there and rip the place up so uh made the most of the situation they said they got banned from top of the pops four times i'm not surprised if you're fucking on there off your nut and kicking the place apart um they were chatting them up they had free bar in the boot in the was it well there wasn't free cheap bar in the beer in the in the bbc bar and they were just causing chaos and that it's like Fucking loving it, weren't they? It's like inviting, you know, the BBC with all the stock up and all that kind of stuff, and then you invite a load of fucking council kids or, you know, these new musicians, young musicians, and that to go and tear it up. You know, most of the shit that was on top of the pops was fucking bland and boring, wasn't it? And what's it called? Ad lip dubbed, dubbed over and stuff. But these were like Scar and probably ripping it up and stuff, so uh, yeah. So there you go, you've heard it there, and then you've heard it here. Suggs was off his head on speed on the first Top of the Pops appearance, so Google it, check it out. I might. Uh, speaking of drugs, an RAF chef who won a Bake Off special has been booted out of the military after a failing a drugs test. Um, sources say Corporal Liam Grime, awarded MB for catering achievements, tested positive for an unknown narcotic. Um, so the booted him out of there, that's a bit tough. I mean, that's a bit, has he said what it was? Well, he's obviously unknown, so he hasn't admitted it clearly. So they've kicked him out and they've said that drug misuse is incompatible with service life. And those found to have misused drugs can be expected to be discharged. But if it's an unknown narcotic, how do they know that he's been taking drugs? It could have been from anything. If he hasn't admitted it, it's unknown, so that's a bit tight that they've kicked him out on the back of not knowing what it is. Because all the other things, that surely it would tell you what it is, isn't it? Tell you what it is, tell you what it is. Drug test, he comes up with like, if he comes up with like, don't know what it is, but it's something. Could be like, surely that's a fucking loophole to get out of it anyway, and it's so it was like cough medicine or some shit like that. But no, he's uh, he's been given the boot, so... It's, it's, it's a bit tight, you know, he's lost his career or whatever, I don't know if he give a shit, but I'm sure he'll appeal that, they're just making a highlight of the news about it, but he'll probably get his job back. Um, Love Island Sheriff Lanray, I don't watch it so I don't know who the fuck he is, um, has had a 24 carat Kim Kardashian style makeover. Let's have a little look at that. It looks like the old, maybe the old days when somebody had a toothache, and they're fucking like you know comics like the Beano or the Dandy, and they fucking have their face tied up like that. 
He's had a Kim Kardashian style makeover. The wannabe model endured an aqua gold beauty treatment at Dr. Assad's Aesthetics in London. Uh, the £1,000 celebrity favourite involves job, jabs to the face with a 24 karat gold needle full of a special serum. When I first read that, I thought it was a 24 karat gold needle full of special st uh, semen. I was like, fuck here now. He's, he's only been a celebrity like two minutes and he's like going in for some, some of that shit. I mean, like, you know, how old is he? Doesn't say how old he is, but he don't look that old. You shouldn't be getting anything fucking injected in your face at fucking 25 or whatever you are. That's just fucking ridiculous. So you're going to be on, you're on your way to be. Uh, Frankenstein in about 20 years time because you're starting young and you're gonna you're gonna be doing that regular I imagine special s s serum unknown serum they're not telling you exactly what it is so it could actually be speed uh, what's it called semen uh, or did I say read the other week there was some of the stars like uh, famous actresses and stuff like that were having a face face like uh what's it called like moisturizer or something like that and it was like thousands of pounds or really expensive and it was made in korea from the foreskins circumcised foreskins of babies in korea like legally legally so circumcised but they're probably thinking you know what we fucking do with all these bits of skin the circumcised bit and they're turning it into this like magical uh or bullshit fucking snake oil moisturiser that all these stars are paying and he said it's making their faces feel like a baby's uh, like a fucking baby's foreskin by the sounds of it but make it feel like a baby's you know whatever so uh, it just fucking shows how mad the money goes to the red literally um, uh, was it Peaky Blinders are back well fucking hell I'm going to run out of time here Gonna be rambling on. Um, I haven't even been rambling on about all the news stories. What we got? Oh, I'm gonna bang these out then. I'll come back to that one in a minute. Craig Davies moving back to the UK. Like it all, like like it all over. It. He's moving back from uh, Miami to London. Uh, yeah. There you go. In Marmite, he might be back uh, on. What's it called? What's that program? Bo Selector, maybe that's going to come back out and he'll have to fuck off back to America. I'm joking, but that was funny, that was. But uh, they weren't very kind to him, was they, but in, the, in those things, but they were hilarious. But he went to America, went to Miami and fucking lived it up over there and he apparently did really well. So sent him on a different different journey, but uh, looks like it's all good because he's coming back, making music. Some people like it. TV, uh, Jason Manford was involved in a terrifying 80 mile car chase and was nearly rammed off the motorway. This guy, was he a comedian, was being driven back from London near a gig uh, in Portsmouth. The guy tried to block them and got out to ask them to borrow some jump leads. They said they didn't have any. And then the guy followed them, like 80, mile, 80 miles, followed them, cutting them up and it was like that film fucking... You know that film from the seventies where they they don't know who the driver is in the car and they keep coming round and trying to cut you off and knock you off the road and stuff, and it just keeps turning up. It was like that apparently. They had to drive to the police station in London and the guy was still there. So uh, he's obviously fucking absolutely nuts, or uh, or he's got an axe to grind with them. What they've been up to. Is, is obviously fucking chasing them down. So maybe he's just been to the comedy show and thought, that was fucking shit, I want my money back. I ain't fucking having it. And I'm, you know, it's wound him up. So he's just followed them all the way to London and they've had to ditch him, fucking run into the police station. And then he's probably got there and now he's like, because he obviously had to do a runner then. And he's driving all the way back to Portsmouth. I wonder why the way, on the way back he's just thinking, what the hell just happened, you know, just, the mist came over, a lot of road rage dudes, they fucking lose it and then 
probably can't fucking. You know, I mean, you just lose it and you have that fucking crazy like anger for him. I mean, like that guy the other day who was like screaming at the coach and wouldn't move out the coach's way when clearly the coach had the right away. And then afterwards, when you go, you probably think, fucking hell, what a fucking idiot. What a idiot I am, you know what I mean? And now it's all on the, all on the news and everything. Uh, right, okay. Scientists have come up with a new treatment for baldness, spicy Korean cabbage. So if you're bald and you want hair and you haven't got the money, like you haven't got the Elton John money, that you can just buy like a, a full-on... His hair's pretty good, isn't it, Elton John, for somebody who was actually bald. Um, so you can do it a different way on the cheap with Korean spicy Korean cabbage. You have it, drink it twice a day for breakfast and again for bedtime. After one month, the average number of hairs has increased from 85 per square centimetre to 90. So it's gone up five hairs in, in how long? One month, five hairs in one month. Fuck me, you're going to be... In it. By the time you get to old age, you might get your hair back. It's going to take some time. Within four months, this figure had reached 92 so four months, so the other three months, you only got an extra two. So you got seven in four months, seven new hairs in four months. So if you can be bothered, because you're going to be drinking, eating cabbage for morning and for breakfast, you're probably going to be losing your partner or your wife or, uh, or whatever else, because they're not going to put up with whatever comes on the back of eating cabbage every morning, every night. Just because you're vain about your hair, you're better off fucking staying bald, man. Just fucking, just say, you know, look at Jason Statham. He's doing it. He's uh, flying the flag for bald guys. Um, a computer is being trained to decipher civil engineer Eisenbard Kingdom's Kingdom Brunel's in I can't read that. Forget that one. Sorry. Um, I don't know what he's going on about. I'm right, going to finish. Oh, there's a cycle. I should have had this one next to the motorbike earlier. There's a cyclist who has set a speed record of 174.3 miles per hour after his customized bike was released from the back of a Porsche and sped along a runway. He rode on the fifteen thousand bike. Uh, he rode on his bike. He basically was pulled along by a Porsche, let go, and then pedalled a bit, and won an award for won the record for pedalling at one hundred seventy four miles per hour. But he didn't pedal up to one hundred seventy four miles per hour. That's why I pulled this out because he got pulled along by the Porsche. So when they reached seven hundred seventy four miles per hour, they released him and he pedalled a bit. And that's how he won the, the the world's fastest cycling record. So I think there's a bit of cheating going on there, I'm afraid. Not really going to accept that unless you can pedal from start to 174 mile per hour. Then you should get the award. But uh, that's the award for being dragged along by a car and released at 174 miles per hour. That's what that record's for. And don't tell me otherwise. Right. Time we got. Okay, so I'm going to finish up on a couple of other things here. Uh, pig hearts may be transplanted into humans within three years, a leading surgeon has claimed. Uh, for, uh, Sir, in Sir Terence English, Sir Terence English. I thought it was, uh, but I don't know what I was going to say. Sir Terence English, that's a funny name, was carried out Britain's first successful heart transplant 40 years ago this week. Um, said his protege during that op will try to replace a human kidney with a pig's later this year. He believes it may pave the way for more complicated animal human transplants. Um, so, yeah, well, that's good if you can, uh, uh, if it works and stuff. And I remember I worked in a butcher's once. Uh, work experience and they cut he cut a pig's eye open I, I had no choice in this matter I didn't want to I didn't want to see that but he thought he'd show me his party trick this butcher and he 
I didn't choose this to do this work experience either. I was put there from uh, wagging school, so it was a punishment. Anyway, he cut this eye open. I nearly threw up, but he fucking cut it open, took the lens out, and put it over a newspaper, and it magnified the newspaper. And apparently, pigs have got the closest to the same eyes as humans, so uh, they could actually transplant eyes as well. So, so yeah, so uh, stay healthy, or a pig's heart could be coming to you, uh, coming to you, uh, sometime in the future. Um, well, it's better than fucking no heart, I suppose. Uh, right, what we got? So finish up on two more things. Then uh, Henry, Peter Fonda has died. The star of Easy Rider has died at age seventy-nine from uh, uh, Jane Fonda's Jane Fonda's husband, uh, Jane Fonda's brother, should I say, and Henry Fonda's son. Um, the actor and counterculture hero rose to fame in 1969, psychedelic road trip, Easy Rider. He died from uh, respiratory failure from lung cancer on Friday. Shame. Um, it's a shame, isn't it? It's an, I just thought, you know, make a make a point of mentioning it because he was like just one of those actors, only from that from that age with Dennis Hopper and Jack Nicholson and all that kind of uh, Warren Beatty, all those kind of. Um, non-conformist kind of actors so uh you know especially that film it was like riding across america where was they going to the mardi gras in uh the film was about them traveling across america going, uh, heading to the mardi gras in uh, new orleans and just fucking living it up along the way i imagine but uh, if, if i remember i can't remember the film now but uh i remember it being fucking really good so yeah there you go peter funder if you didn't know who he was Watch Easy Rider. Great film with Dennis Hopper. What a classic, wasn't it? So, all the motor motorbike dudes love that one. Uh, last thing, oh, last thing was Mick Jagger. Let's finish on Mick Jagger. Uh, he's still alive, thank God. Um, still strutting his silky moves. He's Mick Jagger, and he's just had a heart operation as well. So, uh, He's just about made it before Pig's Art came out, otherwise he might have fucking... Well, he's actually had a heart valve operation, didn't he? Anyway, he, uh, Mick Jagger demands a new mattress. Mick Jagger demands a new mattress at every hotel he stays in on tour. Right, it's starting to sound like a diva now. I was like... I'm, I, I, you know, I'm a big Rolling Stones fan, and I like the fucking... You know, same as like Peter Fonda and that, that kind of... You know, when they were younger and stuff, they when you're musicians, ain't you rock stars? You just pretty much fucking live a, the life that everybody wants to live. They were jealous of that kind of lifestyle, uh, but they're still rocking on. So, uh, but now that he's saying this, because they used to, I like the way the fact that uh, they used to get involved with all the blues musicians in New Orleans and places like that, and encourage them on the stage and that, like Muddy Waters and things like that. But now, well, he's obviously fucking. 70 yard is he 76 but he demands a new mattress at every hotel he stays in on tour but the rolling stones legend requests that he is slept on for one night by a minion is, is that his words a minion to break it in before he visits i think that's the paper's words but he treating somebody like a minion by asking so uh somebody's thrown the word there but you're doing it by your actions the 76 year old is currently on tour with the group in the us his band source says mick always asks for a new mattress in his room no matter how posh the hotel uh, and he insists that the plastic wrapping stays on it while somebody sleeps on it one night on the mattress to break it in sorry but that is pathetic um what do you think you're going to catch something off off off, off one of the hotel Beds or whatever. Why don't you just take, if you're that fussy, just take your own mattress along with your tour bus. Yeah, I'm sure you take fucking tons of other stuff. A mattress ain't going to make much difference, is it? But no, he has to have a new mattress every hotel. And somebody has to be the, uh, you know, the sleeper, the, the breaker inner. If I was them, I'd be like, fucking, no, I'm not going to say what I'd do to break it in. But you know, if they're going to uh, be given a 
knobby job like that, then you might as well make it to your advantage or something, I suppose. But uh, there you go. That's Mick Jagger playing the diva. He'd probably come out and say that's bullshit, but um, I hope it does because that's that's just stupid, isn't it? Um, so anyway, if you want a job, breaking in mattresses, breaking in Mick Jagger's mattresses, get in touch with him. On where, however, you get in touch with the Rolling Stones. Right, uh, I've had enough. So that's all we've got time for. So hopefully, it's been uh, enjoyable to somebody. Uh, Going to put it on the podcast. Remember, so um, uh, tell anybody about it if you want. Otherwise, I'm going to do another one tomorrow. So see you later. Bye.